three years ago, a group of women opened a cafe called Nessawia. One of their main aims was to get people talking about greater rights and freedoms for women in Lebanon. And if you think this seemingly liberal nation does not need such a place, well, think again. Lebanon prides itself on its beautiful women. Cast a quick look around downtown Beirut, and it's easy to get the impression that women here are liberated. But Nadine Mouad, one of the founders of Nasawiya, a collective of feminist activists, says that is absolutely not the case. The problem is that we are sold a lot of fake freedoms that um, raise Lebanese women under the impression that you know they have freedom to go anywhere, freedom to dress the way they want to. Superficial fake freedoms, she calls them, a beautifully packaged smokescreen. <laughs> Randa, not her real name, apologizes for breaking down. She says she's normally stronger than this, but the last few days she's been cracking under the strain of making ends meet to support her three children. She was married off at 21 years old to a man that everyone, including herself, thought would be a decent husband. The beating started when I was pregnant with my first son, she recalls, and got progressively worse. I was bruised, I had a broken nose, I couldn't hide it anymore, she says. Once my son turned four months old, I went to my parents, and their answer was, okay, get the divorce, but you have to give him your son. Her parents were worried about what people would think and put unbearable pressure on her. After promises from her husband, she went back, but the abuse didn't end. He used to beat me until I bled, she recalls. If they ran out of gas or shampoo, or if a child cried, and he forced himself on her. He used to make me pregnant, thinking that as long as I was having kids, he would make me stay, she tells us. Sometimes, she says, she feared he would kill her. In many cases, women who go to the police are simply told to return home, lawyer Amir Badreddin, who focuses on cases of domestic violence, explains. They are told to solve the problem amicably, to keep it a family issue and not cause embarrassment to themselves by bringing it to the police, he says. As for marital rape, they say, the law doesn't mention it as a crime. Renda's experience is rare. With the help of Kaffa, an NGO whose slogan is enough violence and exploitation, she's now divorced with custody of her children. Hers is not an isolated case. There are no official statistics, but Badr Din says an estimated 50% of Lebanese women are victims of domestic violence. Most suffer in silence. And there is no law to protect them women's rights activists, infuriated and no longer willing to be victimized at the hands of Lebanon's fundamentally chauvinistic male society, have taken to the streets, demonstrating for a law to protect women from domestic violence. From their perspective, the situation is utterly ludicrous. In 2009, a draft law passed through cabinet, only to be stuck in parliament embroiled in Lebanon's patriarchal religious politics. The loudest opponents to the law, the heads of Islamic sects, who among other objections, also flat out reject the notion that marital rape should be considered a crime. This could lead to the imprisonment of the man, Sheikh Ahmed al-Kurdi argues, whereas in reality, he is exercising the least of his marital rights. Many in parliament don't agree with that. But in Lebanon's complex and archaic political realm, most are unwilling to rock the boat and take a stance over women's rights. Nadine says the proposed law has been so watered down with amendments that she would actually prefer to see it not pass. If it passes the way it is, it's going to be disastrous and counterproductive. But activists like Nadine say they'll do whatever it takes. In this video shot in front of parliament, women symbolically fall to the ground. A male activist with them says, women only understand beating. As the women rise, they chant, we won't be silent anymore. Each month, 
one dies.